What is going on YouTube Nation? This is Dark Dividend. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit notification bell so don't miss future videos. So the power is finally back. I guess in Northeast Ohio is reported that there were six tornado touchdowns and I didn't have power for a little bit. So I, you probably saw me tweeting on X. Make sure you follow me on there as well. But I want to reflect my dividend stock buys that I had on 821 and these are high yielders still going after the financial sector i'm going to explain to you why i'm going after these two and i like them so if you're new to this youtube channel make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so don't miss future videos smash that like button let's check these dividend stock buys out right now so the first dividend stock that i bought for last week was t row price group now look at these guys against the s p they have taken a beating they're sitting at 109.70. Previous close was 109.51. The day range was 108.78 to 111.13. Day range was 93.53 to 134.64. The market cap is 24.61 billion US dollars. The average volume is 1.50 uh, million. PE ratio is 16.36. That is quite attractive, and I'm glad that I bought those. And the dividend yield is 4.45%. So these guys don't really need that much of an introduction, but I'm going to go over a few things that have me attracted to these guys, and I'm glad that I bought them. So revenue-wise, these guys have been pretty consistent with increasing their revenue. This is annually in millions U.S. dollars, 2016, 4,284, 2017, 4,854, 2018, 5,372, 2019, 5,617, 2020, 6,206, and 2021, 7,671 and 2022, 6,488. A little bit of a drop, but an increase in revenue from 2016 to 2022. Let's go over a few more things. So, a few things I want to go over is revenue in December 2022 is 1.52 billion. That was a decrease in 22.30. Net income was down 64.08. Net profit margin was down 53.77. Earnings per share was down 45.11. So March, still a little bit down. Quarterly, revenue is $1.54 billion. That is a lot. Operating expense, 8.28%. And revenue-wise, by the way, it was down 17.47%. Net income was $421.50 million. That was down 25.78%. Net profit margin was down at 10.07%. That was 27.41%. Earnings per share was 1.69. It was down 35.50. But in June, this was attractive. The revenue was up 6.42%. The revenue was 1.61 billion quarterly. Operating expenses were down 0.09. The net income was 476.40 million. That went up 40.28%. Net profit margin was 29.59. That was up 31.80. Earnings per share went up, which was good. It went up 12.85%, and the earnings per share was 2.02. .02. So I'm going to go over their dividend history real quick, and this is why I like these guys. And what I like about these guys is their solid dividend growth. So this is quarterly. In 2016, it was $0.54. Cents. 2017, it was $0.57. Cents. 2018, it jumped up to $0.70 cents per distribution, per dividend distribution quarterly. 19, 2019, it was 76 cents. 2020, it was 90 cents. 2021, it was 108. Then you had a special dividend at $3. And then you had 108. And then 2022, it cracked to 120. In 2023, it cracked to 122. So their payout ratio is slightly high at 67%. Number of dividend increases in the last five years is five. The dividend growth in five years is 14.44%. That is huge. So if you bought one share, you made 488 with a 4.45% dividend yield. So I'm glad that M1 Finance allowed me to buy these guys because they've been down. And if you saw previously, they have not done well against the S&P since the pandemic. And these are the dividend stocks that I'm targeting because they're just taking a beating and they haven't recovered since the pandemic. 
Let's jump to the next dividend stock. Next is Premier Financial Corp. It's sitting at 18.57. The dividend yield is 6.68%. The PE ratio is 5.54. The average volume is 162.09k. Market cap is 663.51 million US dollars. Year range is 13.60 to 30.80, so it's way down. Day range was 18.25 to 18.24, and its previous close was 18.71. These guys are a little bit smaller as a financial company. They're mostly centered in Ohio. I'm going to briefly go over these guys since you guys are new to this channel, a lot of you guys. And thank you. We're, we have blowing up like crazy. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. So let's check these guys out. I'm going to go to Wikipedia as a reference. The Premier Financial Corp. is an American company that owns and operates Premier Bank and First Insurance Group. They're headquartered in Defiance, Ohio. The company operates full-service branches in automated teller machines in Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan. While the company's dates back to 1920, it was rebranded in 2020 following the merger of the parent companies that owned First Federal Bank of the Midwest, which was known as First Defiance Financial Corp., and Home Savings Bank, which is United Community Financial Corp. So this is one thing that's very interesting with these guys. This is one a little bit more of a risk. I'm going to go over the revenue and dividend history. So here's their revenue in annual millions U.S. dollars annually. 2016, 121. 2017, 148. 2018, 163. 2019, 186. 2020, 317. 2021, 322. And 2022, 339. So there's a huge increase in revenue. That's very attractive. Let's go over the most recent trends of their revenue as well. I'm going to jump to March 2023. This is their quarterly revenue. It was 65.15 million. It was down 10.25%. Operating expense was 40.23 million. That was up 2.47%. Net income was 18.15 million. That was down 31.14%. A uh, net profit margin was down. It was 27.86, which was down 23.27%. Earnings per share was 0 0.51. That was down 30.14%. But in June, this is what's really nice. The revenue was 106.67 million. A year to year change, that was 60.16%. The operating expense was 41.49 million. That was up 12.40%. Net income was up 116.42%. Net profit margin was 45.37. That was up 35.15%. Earnings per share was 0 0.68. That was up 7.94%. So I like the revenue trends. These guys are a little bit of a risk, but I'll take it. And let's jump to its dividend history. So looking at their dividend history, we're starting in 2020. It was 22 cents. 2021, it was 24 cents, 26 to 27 to 28 cents. 2022 is 30 cents. And then 2023, it cracked 31 cents. So their payout ratio is 44%. The number of dividend increases in the last five years is eight. Dividend growth in, excuse me, dividend growth in five years is 14.68%. So if you bought one share, you made 124 with a 6.68% dividend yield. Now I'm going to jump to M1 Finance and show you how many shares I bought with these guys. So let's jump to that. So here's my buys in August. Okay. So T row 161, 55. I bought 1.49 shares. From your financial corp, I threw in 338.48 with the share price in 1941. I got 17 shares. So what I plan on doing with these guys, I have a little higher distribution on these guys is dividend stocks and I'm gonna to continue to buy more. It'd be crazy not to buy these guys at a cheap discount price and continue to reinvest the dividends and focus on my uh, dividend investing strategy is the financial sector targeting, excuse me, the financial sector and real estate sector stocks. So this is kind of what my buys were. I wanted to reflect on that. Just go over a few things with you guys, just some basic stuff. And I'm going to have a video for you guys tomorrow. This storm threw everything off. I was going to have planned two videos in one day, but I'm going to have to scatter it for one a day pretty much and go from there. 
So I will have a video for you tomorrow. The power is back. So if you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Make sure you smash that like button. I put, post a lot of videos, put a lot of time into it. And by the way, I have to jump to my disclaimer. That's not that's like the most painful part, but I have to anyways. You guys take care and have a great Saturday. So as a reminder, I'm giving you a disclaimer. This YouTube channel is not for financial advice. I do not give financial advice. I am not certified to give financial advice. If you are seeking financial advice, get that from somebody from, that is certified to give financial advice or is a financial advisor and has the great credentials. Again, this is just for entertainment purposes. I own these two stocks. I plan on being long in them if something happens. Now, some of the stocks that I buy, I may end up selling in the future if something happens. So again, make sure you do your due diligence. Um, investing is a big risk. You can lose money. You can make money, you can lose money. So I just wanna make that clear. So I'm very transparent with my investments. I do not pump stocks. I do not, I do not believe in pumping stocks. My dividend investing strategy is unique. I buy high yield dividend stocks, I buy dividend growth stocks. I like the hybrid of that. So, you know, there could always, you know, based on what happens, there can always be a risk of a dividend cut. There can be a lot of issues when you um, invest in the stock market or invest in stocks. So I just wanna make that clear. I have that also in my disclaimer in the description and being a dividend investor, it has changed my life. I love earning passive income and making passive income while I sleep. But there is a risk, and I just want to make that clear, with regarding these dividend stocks that I buy. So I just want to make it clear. This is just for entertainment purposes only. I will not give financial advice. I do not plan on giving financial advice. So you guys take care and have a great Saturday.